Video from Gamba AJ. Wuthering waves. This is a problem for all players. What's the problem? I'm curious. One thing before we get into this video, I did notice that from a content standpoint, at least streaming wise, this game has really dropped off, which irks me, pains me. I know we're in a bit of a content lull at the moment, which is kind of the cycle, but it's like less than a thousand people when I last checked on Twitch, which is crazy. Um, as a as a Wuthering Waves Andy, you know, it hurts inside. Let's check this video out then. Wuthering Waves, this is a problem for all players. Hey guys, AJ here. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're going to be talking... This is a new character, actually, that's coming out, isn't he? We have uh, got to see the kit. They do look actually quite good. Um, I forgot what the girl's name is now, but she looks insane. She, I thought she was like a witch because it looked like she had a wand and a broomstick. But the, the, the paintbrushes, I think, and she looks insane. She looks really good, actually. Talking about how... Kuro Games has created a big problem for Wuthering Waves and how okay. they're going to need to address it in the future and how it affects all players, whether it's a whale, light spender, or even free to play. We'll get into what is that? This is not a screen tear. Is, is this like a some kind of mirroring? What's going on here? Uh, whatever, anyway. Um, I'm interested. I I don't know what the issue is personally. Um the meat and potatoes of the situation. As this is always, the character guys, I was talking about. If you like the content the I love the way she looks. The other dude looks super plain in my opinion. Which, I think, that kind of balances out some of the more spectacular-looking characters. It does help. It does help. But I think he just looks a little bit too plain. And I feel the fact that he's a five-star, he's going to be a real poor returning banner, I think. Unless he's just absolutely ridiculously insane. But even then, I still, I don't think he's going to do that well. Maybe it would have been a good idea. Because I think with characters like that, there's no reason why they can't just make them four-stars and just bundle them in with some of the banners, maybe. Um... Not everything has to be a five star as well. They need to start launching some more four stars. I'd like, I'd like to see a little bit more of that as well. They don't. Not every single one needs to be a five star because we're gonna have a bit of a problem then. I think as well. On the channel, please hit a like, comment, and subscribe. Also, please share this video. As she looks awesome. Spreading Norman. awareness to she the looks community so cute. is going to be a big help for this video, as if okay. it becomes a talking point and it reaches other creators and other people who play Wuthering Waves. Kuro sees all this stuff, guys. They don't just listen to CN. They also. That is true. That's one thing I'll give Kuro. They do definitely seem to listen to the international market as well. I think it's because they've got the percentages of their revenue and their fan base seems to be a little bit more evenly split. Where with Huyo, it's drastically more in China. So they just don't really care what the rest of the world's got to say. And that's been evident over the last couple of years, I think, with Huyo, wasn't it? Take global feedback as well. And they like to address Dude, all she looks the so issues. Awesome. Okay, that anybody has any criticism of that way they keep improving their game like they showed us with patch 1.1 Which was an amazing patch, but without further ado guys, let's get into the video. Dude, they're all, their animations look great. So fluid Well, there waves massive problem so first guys in order for me to talk about the problem I need to give you guys a little bit of context how many of you guys play different gacha games aside from Wuthering Waves? Maybe you're playing Zenla Zone Zero right now because it's a new hot thing. True. Maybe you're playing True. Genshin Impact preparing for Natlin. Maybe you're playing Honkai Star Rail and we just got new drip marketing for new characters coming out and their patch is just around the corner once the Jade banner ends. These things that I'm speaking of right now, these different gacha games and how it's affecting you as a player right so now is going to be point A. As you guys have options right now, and you guys can play multiple gachas if you have the... I think mean, that's the problem all gacha games are suffering from now. Um, all games suffer from this in any genre. You know, whether it be a battle royale genre, extraction genre, any genre. You, they're all fighting for your attention, aren't they? And we've only got so much time and so much money to buy games. And obviously, there's free-to-play games and such. But there's the extra element with gacha games. With the time investment and daily logins and stuff. And then, obviously the monetary side of things and the grind if you're going to try and be free to play there's that extra layer you can only really have a, a couple of maybe like three really that you can properly dedicate yourself to if you have a life as well and that's even pushing it then um you know i don't understand how some people can really grind so many different gacha games and and and, and actually like you know eat and bathe well they probably don't but you know it's uh i think it's exacerbated in the in the gacha space that you know that You've kind of got to pick and choose a couple and really invest yourself into those. I mean, whether it's time or money or whatever. Time. Now, I don't know who is watching this video. Maybe Me. you guys have a girlfriend or boyfriend. Maybe you guys are parents. Maybe you guys are in school right now and you're out on summer break and now you have a bunch of free time to play. Everybody's situation is a little bit different when speaking about Dude, how much time kid they have so and how much time good. they have to play these gacha games. Looks so good. So it's really important to understand, guys, that you have options right now because we're currently in the golden age of gacha gaming. And the reason we why are. I say that 
is because not only do you have options now wait till later down the line when azure familia comes out project Morgan comes out guys True. we just got a trailer we, we just got Evanis, uh, Nevenis to Evanis. I've heard some people actually saying that that is Project Mugen, but it's it was different devs, wasn't it? And but I don't know if like that it's the IP has been brought and they've changed the name. That's what people were saying anyway. Obviously, it kind of sounds a little bit wild to me, but then not actually out of the realm of possibility. But Project Mugen's really been usurped by uh, Nevenis to Evanis, really. To be fair, because they, they they dropped a trailer, got five million pre-registrations, and then went totally off the off the map, didn't they? And um, I'm curious to see if we're actually going to see some more of this soon because they've really got to get start getting the their their, their promotion out there now with Neverness to Everness because that game looks amazing in my opinion. Taylor to Neverness to Everness, a new game that's going to be coming out in the future. So one thing I want to prioritize, guys, is again, you guys have options and you guys are paying when you play these gotcha games. And I know some of you might be saying, AJ, I'm free to play. I don't pay any money on these gotcha games. You're paying me your time. And to be fair, we've got so much choice in video games at the moment. Don't get me wrong. I don't think we've ever had so much trash in video games. But we have got so much choice in video games now. And to be fair, people forget the days of the early 2000s. I remember the days when, I think, was it THQ were banging out? I think in the space of a couple of years, they put out about 200 games plus or something like that of movie tying games. You remember, like, there was pretty much every freaking TV show. had There was a, there was a TV show tying, a movie tying from... Nickelodeon stuff, SpongeBob, through to Cartoon Network, through to whatever you can think of, James Bond, and 95 to 99% of them are absolute garbage. So I, I do, I think we look back in nostalgia sometimes. Don't get me wrong. PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 eras were just insane for games, especially the PlayStation 2 era. But I do, I think we've got, we've got so much choice with video games just lately. Because I, I, I hear people saying a lot, oh, there's nothing to play. And I'm like, I think you need to just, uh, you know, spread your eyes out and look for some of the stuff because there's so many good games to play at the moment. You just need to maybe uh, break off the shackles uh, of, of genres and sometimes I think people worry about games that are free to play being like, well, it's got to be trash. It's got to be shovelware. There's lots of good free to play games out there. Obviously, some of them have better monetization systems than others, but man, there is, there's so many good games out there at the minute. No, but you're still paying for your, with your time. And it's important to understand that you as a person are very valuable and time is very valuable. So what you play, I feel like you should be getting the best quality and enjoyment. This is where I want to talk about Wuthering Ways, whereas I feel like right, it's, getting it's my favorite gotcha right now. And that's saying something I'll say the same for me as I well. love Honkai Star Rail. Now, with Wuthering Waves being my favorite gotcha, I play it constantly every day. I have to grind. And I also have to make content for you guys whenever news drops or anything like that. And I appreciate the growth of the to be fair, sometimes, though, I think that can take the shine off a game, you know, when you're doing that, especially for content sake. It, it can really, because you go from just doing as a hobby something you enjoy to really trying to, 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 to go deeper into the game and find meaning where there might not be meaning sometimes. It just, it just kind of, like, really takes away from the game, in my opinion. This channel. However, there is an issue. As somebody who's done that before. Four gotchas, I'm talking about Genshin, Honkai Star Rail, Wuthering Waves, and Zenless Zone Zero that only Wuthering Waves and Kuro has. And that is the seven week cycle. And you may be confused saying, what are you talking about, AJ, seven week cycle? As some people may be new to the gotcha genre and just wanted to play this open world game. Well, currently, guys, Wuthering Waves is also preparing for their console launch too, where they're going to get a bunch of brand new players and they're going to have this big dump of players i think that's going to be absolutely massive actually i do i think console players are going to absolutely eat up wuthering waves i really do because i think it's a quality game the combat's great i think it's going to be a real introduction to a new gacha game that looks amazing with actual genuine really good tight action combat players coming in from the console side while we have already been playing on either mobile or P pc whichever one you're playing on and it's important for you guys to be aware of this that dude looks so basic seven week cycles that weathering waves goes through meaning 28 days for Jin C, 21 days for chang li that's how long the characters are out for guys as well as the entire patch before we move on to 1.2 which is we have so i'm to guessing he's talking about seven weeks i'm guessing he's talking about the length of the banners maybe being too too long and it being a little bit uh too much time to to, to keep people's attention span and they might drift off to to play other games and then you know because of that sunk cost system as well we've got your games maybe just kind of like not coming back potentially um i, I think there's positives and negatives to it. that's if he's what he's going to talk about i'm assuming what he's going to talk about but i think one thing i do like about wuthering waves it, it reduces fomo and a lot of things like that like how it is with the events within updates 
the stuff just lasts for the patch or for a good set of time and it allows you to come back and have a bit of time off and come back and you haven't missed out on a bunch of uh mats and currency and and uh pulls and all that sort of stuff uh, which is quite nice but at the same time i think they should maybe add in smaller events that only last a couple of days and obviously there's going to be fomo there but i just think we'd get more content then and they'll be able to spin them out a bit quicker because they're they're a lot smaller. They're more bite size. You know, they only last a couple of days. There's not much to them, but it's just a little something fresh for the people who are regularly visiting the game and they don't get burnt out on really having nothing to do, especially if they've cleared all the end game content as well. Now, why this is bad for players, guys, is player retention because as of right now, yes, we may be grinding our echoes. Yes, we may be daily login and just completing our dailies, getting our ass right and everything like that. However, while there may be some challenging content in the game right now for all of us, eventually everyone's account is going to progress to the max level, whatever union level that is the current max level for Wuthering Waves. And we're going to max out all our characters practically. And eventually we're going to get to that point where we can prepare for characters ahead of time, mid-max. This is true though. These are all good points really because like this is the, the gacha cycle, isn't it? You max out your particular characters that you like, and then once you've done that, if you're still enjoying your stay, you, you start to build your other characters, and then you get into that cycle of prepping for the next characters, maybe pre-farming, stacking wishes, all that sort of stuff. And if that sort of does become extended, it, it, it is going to be... um, It is going to make people slip away a little bit, I think. Because you've already... Like I say, you've already seen that when I was saying about the amount of people watching on Twitch. It's insane how much it's dropped off. But I don't hear anybody really saying that they don't like Wuthering Waves unless they're like a massive Genshin Andy. Because um, all the content creators kind of like it, but they are all on Zenless at the moment. And I know it's a new hot sauce. It's a new spicy thing. But I definitely do think this is a, an issue, especially for content creators as well, because it gives them nothing new to share. And let's face it, in video games nowadays, content creators are a massive part of keeping that um, cycle of of keeping people interested and in, uh, re and retention and eyes on the game as well, isn't it? it, it it's a massive factor nowadays. No matter how much people want to deny it, like, you know, large content creators drive eyes towards games massively. Makes them get good echoes ready to go day one and just pull on the character. When we get to that point, guys, which is approaching every day, essentially, these seven-week cycles aren't going to feel as good. What's essentially going to happen is we're going to get an amazing story quest. We're going to get some events along the way, do the events, explore the new area. But by then, it's on average going to take us maybe five days if you're a busy person. If you're not that busy and you have free time, maybe two days. And the middle ground would be like three days, guys. So after that three days, what do you do? You can move on to another gacha game, of course, and play that till it's downtime. This is one thing for me where I feel like no gacha game has really solved the issue yet. Is really creating a genuinely interesting, repeatable, almost endless, replayable uh, end game system. Um, I don't think anybody's solved that issue yet, um, and I don't know if they ever will. Um, the, there's the potential to create stuff. Obviously, it's going to take a lot of time and con con constant updates. I think that's where the, you can solve if you are going to not shorten the updates, you know, because obviously all this stuff takes time to create. And I suppose they don't want to pump out too much stuff early and, you know, and then not have enough content to keep keep it dripping kind of thing. You know what I mean? So I, I think maybe they need to work on more in-game content. That, that's what's going to keep people retained. Stuff that's really enjoyable, that's fresh, that changes, that has like a sort of refreshing and rotating system to it as well. Um, it's actually had some variety to it also like it's difficult uh, and i haven't got the answer but i feel like that is the way that we need to go to keep people attached because you're always going to burn through content especially people who are enjoying the game and play it a lot are going to burn through content there's only so much content that can actually parade but if they create systems that can you know pivot and change and feel fresh and feel challenging and give you loads of different things to do i think that's the way to go about it um because at the moment we have got good end game stuff but it, it is quite limited isn't it the issue is going to be is right now currently most wuthering waves players that are playing different gotchas are either playing something along i want to know when gaming became a about doing everything as quickly as possible it seems modern games are very small interest windows i uh, agree dude um and soon even big titties fade away i remember when a game was common talking point for months and months agreed i do agree that, that i think that is the culture of the internet and content creations driven a little bit of that hasn't it it's like 
we we don't get to really enjoy games from the off. This is why I was talking about Throne and Liberty when I was saying that I'm going to try a little bit of the beta and that's it because I want to enjoy the launch. We we see games, we, we kind of know what a game's all about before we even get to play it day one and that kind of takes a sh the shine off it, doesn't it? And then there's this drive to just push through all the content. Everybody wants to min-max. Everybody's learning how to do to do everything the best way and it kind of takes that that enjoyment, that 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 specialness of, of of learning things in a game and trying new things out and you know failing at stuff and then being like, oh, let's try this now and oh, getting that magical feeling of like, man, this really works. And you came to it with your own conclusion as well. Um, I I, I think that content creation and and streaming has inevitably been, been a big factor in changing that, hasn't it? Really, uh, there's no denying it. On something smaller like Cookie Run Kingdom, or if they're playing another big gotcha, they're either playing. Honkai Star Rail for the most part. Zenless Zone Zero, I would say some, but I think most people who play Wuthering Waves don't really even want to play Zenless Zone Zero. And I think it Zenless. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Um, you know, there might be a large portion of players who just like I don't vibe with that. I think there's a lot of people who don't because let's face it, Zenless Zone Zero has has created a, a, a big divergence in in opinions. You know, people are really at odds with each other there's some people who love it there's some people who just say it's absolute trash um I'm, I'm i'm in the middle like i think the game's decent it's a lot of fun it really is it's simple when you start off but there is genuinely some nuance to the game and 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 the game does doesn't really sh show that off well and even doesn't teach that it kind of says look at this brainless game but it's not so brainless um but i, I think there's a lot of people who play wuthering waves that enjoy zenless on zero i think there's a lot of people who play wuthering waves that enjoy all of the different gachas, at least the quality ones anyway. I think the people who just get like the sunk cost uh, bias with games and are just Andes and are just like fanboys and, and, and such are the type of people who are just like, yeah, no, that's just not touching that. But, you know, you might be right, but I don't I don't necessarily agree with that. I think there's plenty of people who play Wuthering Waves will enjoy Zenless as well. Zone vice versa. Zero players feel the same way about Wuthering Waves where they just really want to play Zenless Zone Zero. They don't want to play Wuthering. So those to be fair though, Zen, this is the new hot thing, isn't it? So even I've been playing a lot of that recently, but I definitely think Wuthering Waves is a better game, in my opinion. There's, they both do different things and they do them better in different ways. But yeah, I've been playing it because it's new. It's a honeymoon period, isn't it? Those two are separated. And of course, Genshin players just, I don't know, they feels like they only play Genshin and they're... <laughs> That's one thing I will agree with. That's one thing I've noticed. Genshin players really seem to like... They, they, I think there definitely is like this kind of like like you know master race kind of attitude with Genshin players as well I see it a lot um now I know the games is a tribal uh space everybody you know every game's got that sort of um community to it you know with the toxicity and whatever but yeah the, the, there's a lot of Genshin players like any game that comes out then it's just automatically it's absolute trash because it's not Genshin and I think a lot of that's because I don't know, maybe there's special memories of people because it released in COVID and then there's people who spent a lot of money and then there's the sort of people that really hate when games take things from other games, which I don't get at the end of the day. I don't even care if a game plagiarizes another game. If I get a good product at the end of it, I'm happy. Still committed to this game, but I mean, they have Natland up, gearing up, so let's see how long this lasts before we get into another drama with them that we got to cover. But the reason why, guys, this is important for Kuro to change it and for us to spread awareness is we're eventually going to hit a patch period in the future where we're like we keep, we're bored we we don't there's not enough content in the game and it's going to be frustrating there's a lot of people already there now if i'm honest i am not because after 1.1 drop i went through the main part of the story and then i stopped for a couple of days and then zenlis came out and uh, well zenlis came out right after 1.1 so i played a bit of it done the story and then i've still got plenty to do like i've still got um some of my characters to build at the moment I've, I've still got a bunch of traces to do with characters i've still got end game content to do and i've still got a bunch of side quests left now in the new area so i've still got plenty to do so i suppose um not rushing through it has helped me there really but i think that's what that's the way gacha players play these games something new comes out and they hammer it hard and then they just go off to something else don't they and i think that's why they get bored so i suppose Looking at the way the, the players play the game is important and maybe adapting to that to maybe shortening things up or having like parts to the updates where new stuff hits midway through. I think that probably is the best way to solve it. You know, events, whatever it might be, adaptations to the end game, switching things up, you know, changing the battles, changing the holograms, changing afflictions and statuses and, you know, resistances and just adding like kind of unique little things on the fly. 
frustrating because I feel like content creators right now for Wuthering Waves are kind of carrying the hype for 1.2. Eventually, we all will be hyped when we see the trailer. And obviously, there are character animations. If you want to go check them out ahead of time, guys, I have kit detail. So this is what I say. This is like the problem. We, we, the, we, before we even know what's coming, we know what's coming almost because the leaks and kit details and people already know, right, I know exactly how I'm going to build this character and I've got to go and do all this and we pre-farm. And I think it takes a bit away the... The enjoyment, and then when the game comes out, everybody wants to race to have the most powerful character. So the prepped pretty much the character drops and the max the character out within a, a couple of hours. Whereas I like to just kind of wing it really with these games until I'm like I hit a brick wall, and then I'm like, okay, maybe now I'll look to see what the community is saying and what's the best way to go about it. Potentially, if I can't figure it out myself. Videos and I have their animations being shown off. I don't cover any story. You know, I'm never going to do that, but I do think the only reason Kuro Games even has hype for 1.2 right now is because the content creators are covering the kit and showing off the characters and what they can do right now. And I think they should be a little bit thankful because I feel like if it wasn't for content creators right now showing off what JG and Zhang Liao could do, there would be this little quietness and the hype would die down. I think the hype has died down a little bit and it is still kind of quiet, even though they have been shown off. I suppose they are kind of carrying the hype a little bit, I guess. But at the same time, the game has just launched. I think, like, you know, with these live service long-term games, I think we do have to allow for the opening window to, you know, give us the initial bit of the game. And then maybe there'll little, be a little bit of a, a slowdown, a trail-off in things. And then hopefully things ramp up because initially they're going to see how well the game does, how much revenue is coming in, maybe increasing the size of the teams, all that sort of stuff's got to be taken into account from a business standpoint, you know, overheads, right, can we employ more employ more people to get this sort of content out? What's the consumer wanting? Let's pivot, let's add this into the game, let's change this. That all sort of takes time, doesn't it? So I, I'm a little bit more forgiving in that sense where the initial launch or the post launch, I'm okay with a bit of a lull because I think that's to be expected in most live service games as the company kind of gathers steam and picks up and starts going um but i can I, as obviously from a consumer standpoint most people are going, i don't care about that just give me shit now i need it now and i want it now kind of thing and if you don't i'll go elsewhere and get it from somewhere else and guys you're gonna have like i said before project mugen and azure pamelia neverness to everness but guys who's to say there isn't other gotchas being worked on quietly that are probably going to show a trailer and be like oh yeah here's closer to release day and then you have that and then maybe when we're on the seven week cycle you may be like yeah it's cool that kuro games is making another patch but honestly it takes too long why would you not go play another game i'm not gonna do that to be fair i think all of these problems though affect all live service games it's not just a gacha game situation i think this affects like you know free to play shooters you know things like valorant uh destiny you know uh insert game here whatever mmo it is also from this situation of uh, uh, there's always something else attracting the attention of the consumer i don't think this is just specific to wuthering waves or gacha games as well that because i love wuthering waves but i just want to let you guys know that i think kuro games is shooting themselves in the foot right now because every patch they improved they gave us an amazing gen c story amazing visuals. agreed agreed now, Fernament was beautiful definitely stepped up everything in 1.1 the music fit well it was peaceful it's one of my favorite environments i never liked dragon spine from genshin because of the freezing issue the fact that i can roam around freely in this snow covered mountain and then sun when the sun's out it looks nice dude i hated that nice when it's nighttime and the whole little village area that's lit up looks nice everything about it was a big w that they addressed issues on and i know they're gonna keep addressing issues as long as it's fair criticism guys i only want wuthering waves to be the best version of itself because i truly do love this game and i really want it to grow i want it to get to the mainstream i understand it's hard for gacha i agree to I, get I, 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 I do want it to do well I, I, the thing is i think we worry too too much sometimes people in the gacha space it needs to be like you know it needs to be looked at as like a freaking i don't know a call of duty or a grand theft auto the, the gacha space might seem niche within gaming and how it's looked on in terms of of eyes but the, the space is massive man it's making crazy amounts of money at the end of the day as long as the game's enjoyable and kuro are making enough to reinvest in the game and it to continue because it's a priority for them because it's making the money that's all that matters to me the game doesn't need to be the next big thing you know because i think once a game gets too big i think it becomes so big that it kind of 
it eats itself with all the different people tugging at it and all the different political views and what people want. And I think they try to please everybody and then they end up pleasing nobody. So I'll happily keep Wuthering Waves as a niche as long as it continues to make crew enough money to make the game better personally. Into the mainstream, especially because the only one that did was Genshin because of the COVID buff. Yeah, but guys, massive COVID buff. Gacha games make a lot of money. They have the potential to keep investing in their product and gain so many players and make one of the most amazing things ever. Think about it. It's not a triple A title. When triple A titles are made, they spend a lot, but that is the final product. With these gacha games, not only do they spend a lot and it costs a lot to make, but then they make back a lot of the money so they can expand and create these new worlds that feel amazing that anybody would want to play and be like, yeah, there's gotcha elements to this, but this game is amazing. I want to play. Not to mention, Kuro already rewards players, and that's a positive benefit. Well, this is what I was talking about in the open world video. I think creating a game like Wuthering Waves and like Genshin, it, it it's kind of becomes its own problem in a sense because it's a game first with the gacha system attached to it rather than just being a, a, a gacha game through and through, and everything is designed to work within the system. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, kind of like how uh, Zenless is in a way. Um, and I know this game, a lot of the, and the same with Genshin as well, the systems are all designed around, you know, your characters farming, mats, all that sort of stuff, currencies, pulls, whatever it be, leveling your character to, to progress through end game content and all that sort of stuff, getting DPS checked to need to invest more and all that sort of stuff. But it is an action art open world RPG at the end of the day. So it takes a lot more time to create the maps, to create the, the systems, to create the mechanics. To, to design the characters, you know, the voice lines, the story. It's all a lot bigger, isn't it? So I think we've got to take that into account as well, that that's going to slow down the 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 content, the smaller games that are a little bit more compartmentalized and specifically designed for the gacha space. They're going to be able to churn out content a lot faster as well. And of course, we've got to remember, I think this is Kuro's first self-published global release, isn't it? I don't think PGR was, I could be wrong, but I don't think they globally self-published that game. I might be wrong, but, you know, so I, I think we've got to give them a little bit of time to get going. But obviously, the modern gaming is, is incredibly cutthroat, so I understand as well. If they don't, it is going to be the game that suffers, and then in the end, people who enjoy the game are going to suffer as well, because we're going to lose a great game, aren't we? But this is just a talking point and a conversation that... I do feel like is in some of some players minds and some content creators right now who do want to play more of the game and want to make more content for you guys but it is tough right now let me know in the comment section below guys what do you think as always please hit the like comment and subscribe and guys don't forget to share this if you do enjoy it and spread the awareness of this talking point as i would love to see it in the wuthering waves community just branch out and hear from what others have to say that's it for this one guys and i'll talk to y'all next time peace that was a good video. Uh, Gamba AJ, the Wuthering, Wuthering Waves. This is a problem for all players.